Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Split 4 Let's Talk About the League podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Sig, Northern Storm support, and the emotional support for Prowler222 and Arcane Soda, who are joining us this evening. How are you guys doing? I'm doing alright, and yourself? I'm doing hunky-dory peachy keen. Uh, a lot of that is because this podcast is brought to you by Old Host. You can support the LCUS by signing up with Old Host. Old Host is where you can build your own website. Go to www.oldhost.net and click Promotions for details. For every sign up, using the coupon code LCUS, 100% of all profits will be donated back to us. Time is limited for this promotion, so sign up today. Support your local online league community. Well, guys, uh, I can't, I cannot express how excited I am for this wonderful split we have coming up. Pretty dynamic, lots of moving, lots of shaking. Uh, I, are you guys riding that wave with me? Are we, are we together on that? Oh, absolutely! I'm so excited for this upcoming split. I think uh, we've been deprived of the LCUS long enough. I'm, I'm ready to get back into it. Well, after the millennium uh, that was split three. Uh, that was just such a long split. We had so many breaks in. And then we had that really long... It was like a six-week break. Like, just, just a bit much for my personal taste. I'm ready to get back into action. Actually, this is my first time getting into action. So, uh, super nervous about that. Uh, you guys are old vets. Maybe I'll get some tips from you before this is all gone. But let's, let's hop right in. Uh, probably the thing that's pressing on everybody's mind. Team rankings. Uh, we, we sent out a wonderful survey uh, as, on our Facebook. Please check us out, LCUS on Facebook, uh, where we asked you, the community, to rank our teams. Help us come up with that uh, ranking for exactly where all the teams stand. Now, for those who are just joining us and might not have ever heard of us, the LCUS is a, a uh, organized league amongst friends. We do uh, run tournaments that we stream on twitch our splits are of various length and we have our own homebrew teams uh, th uh teams that are uh specific to the lcus so let's let's hop in let's talk about these teams uh just uh, again for those that are just joining us that is team uh northern storm gale force blitzkrieg phoenix white wolf gaming nine lives and option 12 those are the teams of this upcoming split. Some of these teams are new. Some of us have been. Uh, some of these teams have been with us for quite some time since the beginning. So, uh, I'm pumped to hop in. Let, let, let's uh, let's go over these community rankings. Uh, Soda, can you break them down for me? All right. So for our community rankings, we had uh, you guys decided that it was most likely that Phoenix was going to be at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, and then Northern Storm was going to be second, and then we had option 12 close behind in third, with nine lives uh, holding fourth, followed up by Gale Force in fifth, White Wolf Gaming in sixth, and Blitzkrieg uh, in seventh. Now, some of those numbers, I know I was personally shocked. Uh, now, Prowler. Uh, Prowler, Soda, and I, we also came up with our own lists before we reached out to you guys, the community. And we wanted to get some more, uh, to, to compare some of our notes. So, Prowler, uh, what, what was your list? And, and what, what do you think are some major differences between you and the community right now? Um, so, my list, personally, um, I had Northern Storm, Gale Force, Blitzkrieg, and Phoenix making the playoffs, with White Wolf Gaming, Nine Lives, and Option 12 all missing at the split. Uh, the biggest difference that I can see is I've option 12 as my seventh team, um, ranked lowest going into the split. The community and my fellow, you know, casters on the uh, on the podcast here both thought that option 12 would do very good near the top in almost everyone's uh, everyone's scoring here. Um, very very confused by that. Honestly, I feel like our team is uh, is not riding on the same potential as everyone else, and we're going to be relying on teamwork whereas other teams have just better players overall. I, I could maybe see your point, uh, if it wasn't for the fact you're rolling with a squad of vets. I mean, you're a vet yourself. You've you've shown your ability throughout. Uh, I don't think that that's, a, that's it's really a detractor, even if uh, there is some new hotness on some of these teams. Uh, Soda, thoughts? What, 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 is he right? What's, what's happening? 
I uh, disagree with his position uh, to or his decision to put him his team so low uh, because if you look at it, he's had great success on option 12 under the banner with a lot of the same players. They won the championship with him in the top lane, Ace in the mid lane, and Ashaway as support. Uh, and now they've got Lysimachus in their mid lane, and Prowler's moved to the jungle, uh, but he's also had a successful history with Lysimachus on his team making playoffs that first split on White Wolf Gaming. So I feel like there is more than enough uh, synergy already laid in the team that they have absolutely no reason to be last place in this league. I'm robbing that boat with you. I put option 12 right there at the top. Uh, it, though you might say you might not have like the hard talent that numbers might stack up, uh, there's there's quote-unquote thoroughbred material in this roster that option 12 have. I mean, it's probably one of the most veteran rosters that we have. Uh, what are some other differences we had? Looking at it, uh, you, the community, said Northern Storm would do really well, and uh, somebody agreed with you. Uh, I, I might be a little partial. I put us... Not as high up. But uh, Prowler, tell me your thoughts. So yeah, I had Northern Storm in first place, and I think a lot of that is, again, you know, we're talking about veteran leadership. Shaken Not Stirred returning in the top lane is a huge boom for Northern Storm. Um, you know, and they have other returning members now, too. Uh, Sigtail Infinite has replaced Grundle Booty. He has experience in the playoffs. Sig, you've been watching us for three splits. You got notes on everyone, I'm sure. I'm, I'm expecting that your scouting and having watched so many of the games uh, from the casting chair is uh, going to be a real help to your team, too. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, if if my mechanics weren't the, the same as a blind armless man, uh, it might be better. But that's beside the point. Evan, tell me the thing that shocked you most about this community. Uh, sorry, Arcane Soda. Tell me the most that shocked you from these community rankings. Um, I wasn't too surprised about the top three. Uh, I personally had, well, we all had nine lives a little bit lower than the community. Uh, we all three had nine lives in the bottom two positions, but the community felt like they were going to be able to make playoffs. Uh, not that it's a bad team. It's a very difficult league to judge because all the teams look so comparable. Uh, and it's just really rough to judge. I had a troublesome time making my own list because I felt like almost every position was interchangeable from first to seventh. So there weren't any huge red flags to me. Okay, okay. Now, Prowler, you, you actually had some interesting thoughts about non-lobs. Uh, looking at the roster, they've got uh, what was now Slippery, P95, formerly 5 Loco Addict, uh, Nebulon, CB Hickey, Brandana 11, and Gregosaurus Rex. Uh, this roster, what, what are your thoughts? If, if these numbers are going to align more with the community rankings versus our rankings, what needs to happen? So, uh, you know, for nine lives, the potential in the bot lane is there. Brandana's one of the best, if not the best player in the league. Um, pairing him with Greg, I think, is really dangerous. That makes their bot lane very potent. Um, CB Hickey, I think you saw the talent that he put out there, and that's going to help them a lot. Um, his Galio was very good in the in the third split. For me, this team is going to come down to um, Slippery, P95, formerly 5 Loco Addict, uh, returning to the top lane and how well he plays. And I think if he plays above where he was previously, this team could go far. They could win the championship. And if his play slips, if he hasn't kept up with it uh, since he's been gone, um, I don't see the team doing very well. So I, I think uh, a lot of it is on Five Loco. Or I'm sorry, Slippery. And uh, we'll we'll get to see that throughout the split and see how he's how he's grown. No, no, no pressure though. No pressure. Always, yeah, of course. No, no pressure on him. Just you know, the entire split. Now. The, the one point of contention that was uh, that really shocked me between the community rankings, uh, my rankings, and you guys was Blitzkrieg's placement. 
Uh, Soda, what what are your feelings on this Blitzkrieg roster? What what what's going to make them pop off? You you have them higher than the rest of us. I know there was some mobility in yours. What's happening? I feel like the roster has a lot of potential. Uh, with washed up top laner being one of the best top laners in the league, and Exia now moving back from AD carry to his main position of mid lane. So I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of potential in those two very potent uh, solo lanes, as well as just seeing how much J-Dog can actually help influence those lanes and kind of get the snowball rolling. I can get behind that. I think J Dog's uh, J Dog in chat is behind that. Uh, he's he's calling it out now. They're going to make playoffs. Uh, prove the community wrong. We'd love to see that. Well, everybody else in chat, uh, go ahead, throw it up if you're listening to us. Uh, wh what team is going to outperform these rankings? Uh, again, uh, we'll we'll publish these. Uh, it's uh, number one, Phoenix, number two, Northern Storm, number three, Option 12, number four, Nine Lives, number five, Gale Force, number six, White Wolf Gaming, and number seven, Blitzkrieg. But before we move on, I just want to point out, this White Wolf, I I've always been a pocket fan of White Wolf, and that's not just because I got the jersey, folks. That This is a very strong roster. White Wolf Gaming are traditionally some of the most innovative players that we have in the LCUS, and I think a lot of the weight of this team is going to be on meme's shoulders. If uh, a spicy hot meme can can really go off uh, as he did with uh, Northern Storm last split, he he really when they uh, performed very well there at the end of the split and playoffs, a lot of that was on his 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 very muscular back. So uh, I'm excited to see that play. White Wolf I think has some major number movement where they could be at the end of all this. So so we broke down the teams. Let's. Let's look a little bit more on a player individual level. Who in your power rankings, Prowler, g give me your top five. If, if, we, were, if we were making that all-star team today, end of the split, who, who, who are we going to be talking about throughout the split? Uh, if I had a list of top five for a player, um, Shake and Not Stir jumps out at me in the top lane. Uh, Spicy Hot Meme in the mid lane. I have Van Hohenheim listed as my best... Uh, I'm sorry, Spice Hat Meme in the jungle, Van Hohenheim as the mid laner. Brandana, again, I already talked on, um, being such a great ADC, and his partner in uh, the support role, Greg, I think is the, you know, not just the most potent bot lane because of how they work together, but each individually are the best in their positions. I, I, I can get with that. I can get with that. Uh, Soda, give me, give me your top five. Uh, I think uh, when we took these notes down before i think we all were in agreement that uh these were the premier players for their roles were the was shaken not stirred spicy hot meme van hohenheim brandana and greg they're all just they've been consistently performing so well in past splits that they've been playing that you just can't count them out i, I can get behind that I, I i said it every time that he played when Brandana played, he's one of the most dynamic uh, carries in general in the LCUS. Very powerful player. Van Hohenheim, he was the first mid lane champion. Uh, I, I'm just so pumped when I see him play. You never know exactly what to expect. I mean, outside of Zoe. We can always expect Zoe. So, uh, we, we've we again, I, I line up with y'all on these top five picks, but who do we really need to watch out for? It's easy to say, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I know I'm getting ready to play against Faker, but who's the one that's going to sneak up on you? That's the one that that I'm concerned about. I, I know our players are going to be concerned about that, and I know when all our fans of the LCUS are doing their fantasy drafts, uh, uh, Sig Tall Lord number one draft pick, please and thank you. Uh, who are they? Who should they be looking for? What uh, Prowler? You first. Who 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 should we be watching out for really now? And, you know, again, we're talking about players who have the potential to exceed their ELO or play above where they're expected to or where they've been slotted based on their abilities. Or, you know, teams were created to try to be equal. And the players that we're listing here are the players that we believe can play above what they've shown, and that can help lead their team to victory. I think the number one player you need to look for is Exia. Um, played ADC last split. You saw a lot of his gin. 
uh, the reason that we were seeing so much Jin is because he was playing an off roll, and you don't have as many comfort picks when you're doing that. Slotted now in the mid lane, I think he's going to really exceed everyone's expectations, and I look for him to really help uh, Northern Storm. I'm sorry, that's a uh, Blitzkrieg, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's correct, that Exia is on Blitzkrieg. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, my apologies, he's a Blitzkrieg mid laner. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, go ahead. Uh, Soda, who should we be watching out for? I think one of the biggest wild cards in this league is going to be uh, j Dog, just because we don't have that much uh, history seeing him in the league, how he works with the team dynamic, dynamic and all that stuff. So I feel like uh, whether or not he can show up is going to be very instrumental for his team. And... That's going to be something to really watch for. I, I can get behind that. And checking out chat, he's throwing some love to you too. So uh, he's saying that you're a climber. He's saying that you're going to outperform. So I, I hope to see that. I mean, against every other team but Northern Storm. But I hope to see that. I, I, I agree with a lot of what y'all said. But I got to tell you, with that Exia pick, another thing that plays into that is Poison Ivy. Last split, Exia was not playing on some... Uh, on the best footing, he's a strong player, performed well in those in the games that we did see him really go off. But whenever your ADC struggles, it's it's much more difficult to shine as a support. So I think she's got some real potential. I've got I've got some uh, play history with her prior to the league, so uh, I know what she's capable of, and I think this could be her split. This could be the time she goes off. I think one of the other big people to watch out for is actually you uh in that support role because i feel like your elo may not be that high but your game knowledge and your mechanics definitely by far outclass where you're placed and uh being moved into a team environment i feel like you're given basically all the tools you need to show up and say hey i'm better than where i'm ranked and i'm gonna help carry my team to victory well when i put together my resume and i send that to riot uh, i'm gonna ask you to, to to write that down oh you you can use me as a reference that's fine okay great great good good oh uh, folks life pro tip number one uh because the lcus we were all about that life pro tips uh networking very important now speaking of networking there are going to be some matchups people have are going to meet some people in lane uh, and it might not be for the best outcome, depending on who we're talking about. So, uh, Prowler, let's start with you. What 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 matchups do I need to be watching out for lane wise? Uh, lane's kind of a loose term for the jungler, um, but I'll I'll take on it. Um, for me personally, the the champion, or I'm sorry, the player I'm least looking forward to playing against this split is going to be Goomstomp. Uh, not just because we haven't seen him play in the jungle. You know, he's played ADC previously. Um, just looking at the champions that he's been using to practice with, you've got Jarvan, Rengar, Talia, Scar, and Sejuani. And a pool like that is so hard to work around because there's so many different things that you're using. Um, you know, Scar, you're looking to dive in and pull a carry away. Rengar, you're looking to just eliminate one. Jarvan, you're looking to isolate a team. And Talia, again, you're looking to just pop off and, uh, you know, be an AoE threat. I think having... A pool where you can do so many different things and not knowing what route their team's going to go makes it very hard to ban him out. And I think he's a great player. I'm, I'm really not looking forward to the matchup. Uh, fun, fun story uh, about my boy Goonstomp. First time I ever played League with Goonstomp, he played in the jungle. Every game I played with him, he played with the jungle. And we were looking for subs in split one, and I get a hold of Ace, and I say, Ace, this guy, one heck of a player, we should get him to sub if we need, you know, uh, uh, that that kind of person to fill out role. When when I find out he's, he's going to sub, I'm like, yeah, I'm excited to watch the game. I go to watch it, and he's playing ADC. <laughs> and he only plays ADC in the LCUS. And the guy is one of the best-rated ADCs in the LCUS. But he's a jungler. I, I think this is going to be insane. This is going to be some transcendental, take you to the next level, write your mom about it, jungling. I'm very excited to see it, except for whatever week he plays Northern Storm. Just going off of that uh, sub train there, 
Uh, shout out to Amaya for the Twitch Prime sub, and just a reminder to everyone if you have not done so already, uh, because those Twitch Prime subs do expire monthly. Don't forget to resub if you like the content we're producing here. Oh, Amaya, thank you so much. Oh, gotta get lucky. Follow it just now. Following up on Amaya Chan with that pro play on the gotta get with the uh, Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. Gotta get lucky. Well, uh. Uh, Soda, what is there? Is there a lane matchup that I need to be worried about this upcoming split? I think the uh, the lane I'm least looking forward to is going to be the very first lane I'm going to have to deal with with uh, nine lives spot lane because Brandana and Gregosaurus are arguably the best bot lane in the league, and just from an Elo standpoint, they standpoint they are the best bot lane in the league so it's gonna be a troubling matchup but i believe amaya and myself can hold our own in that lane and hopefully pull out a win okay okay i, I know I, I agreed with you on that one that, that is probably the most intimidating lane i'm not looking forward to uh i i remember the brandana twitch game that instilled that fear that I'm going to carry with me to the grave. Uh, so I'm, I'm pumped for that matchup as well. I wish you the best in it, but it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, the, the real winner is the viewer. Well, uh, let's. Uh, we're going to take a very short uh, break and a message from uh, one of our sponsors, very thankful for. Uh, so we'll be right back. Have you ever wanted to take the uh, massive battle arena offline too? You should check out Nero LARP. Nero LARP is a live-action roleplay that has chapters all over the United States. Uh, please visit NeroLARPOnline.com for more uh, information. They're also going to be bringing us the, the uh, skin, show, uh, skin showdown every game, so uh, we thank them for that. All right, guys. Uh, real talk. Uh, we've, we've got some uh, veterans coming back. Some people that have been with us, you know, since the dawn of the league. And we've got some new players, uh... Let, let's break some of that down for our, our existing listener friends and for those that are just now joining us here at the LCUS. Uh, let's let's break this down for them. I, I think one of the ones that are most iconic in my eyes uh, is Ace. Ace 10 301. He's moving from mid lane down to ADC, so he's still going to be a carry, but he's going to be in a very different position uh, with a different role in the team, really. Uh, is there any that stick out to you, Soda? Uh, some of the notable ones will be Chaosix moving back to jungle uh, from support. Uh, Exia moving to that mid lane instead of being the ADC. Goonstomp moving back to the jungle uh, off that ADC, which he was performing so well on. Uh, a couple other notable ones is going to be Stelio Kantos. Uh, moving to the top lane from ADC, uh, which he was uh, historically a uh, bot lane duo with Tilted Snorlax, who is moving to the mid lane. And then we've got a few new players as well uh, moving into the league. Prowler, we've, we've talked about some of these new players. Uh, uh, what Are any of them popping out in your mind? Uh, the one that I can remember is Luffy Senpai. Uh, we had a couple of... Um... What are those matches called that we play on Wednesday, guys? Gym class feeders. Gym class feeders episodes uh, a while back, just to kind of like showcase the new players. And Lofi Senpai's play really stood out to me. I think he did a great job supporting. Um, be interested to see how he does on on Blitzkrieg. I think it's going to be a high point, uh, most most definitely. Uh, I'm excited for Fat, Fat Jackalope, just on the name alone. Uh, you could be the worst player on earth, and I'd probably pay to see that that, that guy play. <laughs> uh, we we do have a Deformed Ape, uh, Ape. They're going to be the jungler for Gale Force. Gale Force, uh, definitely rocking a lot of new players. Two out of the five are new players, so it's gonna. Uh, it, it, they definitely got that X factor going on. And two out of the five are new players, and two of the returning players are switching positions. So I think Gale Force is the team that um, has the most potential to either exceed or uh, go below the Elo that they've drafted. 
Uh, I'll, I'll be really interested to see how they do it during this, but it, it'll be fun to watch uh, Tilt the Snorlax and Stellar Cantos change positions. Yeah, it, it's super intimidating, uh, uh, knowing the, the capability of those players. Now, I'm going to ride the hype train, folks, but you just bought your ticket. Uh, I am super pumped to welcome my partner in crime, my duo partner, uh, Fan, that's WD Fan 13 He is the ADC for Northern Storm. Getting some play time with this guy, his, not only is his game knowledge insane, but his timing. Like, he, he's, he's got, like, an internal clock built. He just knows when to go in, what to do. It just he, He's really taking my play to the next level. So I'm, I'm pumped. I'm hyped to be able to play with him. Very thankful. And uh, just kind of rounding out our new players, we've also got J-Dog stepping in. I know I talked about him a little bit earlier and how uh, hopefully he can have a lot of positive impact on Blitzkrieg and kind of get that team moving in the right direction uh, after an unsuccessful last split, but they got a whole new roster and they got a whole lot of potential. And just a quick shout out to Gregosaurus Rex uh, following up that hype train with the Twitch Prime sub. What? We are at three? Oh my gosh, this is such a good day. Uh looking at it uh we also ooh, uh, we do have some additional returning players we've already talked about five loco addict now slippery p95 uh but we also have coming back as i think prowler pointed out sigtaw infinite for northern storm uh now there's a question with him on what exactly the impact he's going to have on northern storm because technically he's returning Nor northern storm he was part of the team that made it to finals uh but wasn't able to uh pull the trigger against option 12 uh, so, Infinite, uh, I, I love playing with him. If you can look at our names, you can see that we're, uh, we're friends uh, IRL. Uh, so, just, uh, I, I think it's going to be good. I, do I know what's going to happen? No, but I know, he's, I know what he's capable of, and I think if he pulls the trigger, uh, we're going to put those championship belts on. Calling it now. Uh, but I'm so excited to talk about these upcoming week's matchups, but before we do that, let's go ahead and hear from uh, one of our sponsors. Foster Adventure is proud to sponsor the LCUS. Foster Adventure enhances the lives of teens in care by funding social, athletic, and educational opportunities and items that give a sense of normacy to teens in care, promoting friendships, life skills, higher education, and hopes in their future. Donate today. Op opportunity awaits. Now, if you are looking to donate to our wonderful sponsor, Foster Adventure, please check us out on Twitch. It is one of the buttons below. I believe it is a beautiful orange color. Uh, so please hit that button. They do some incredible work. They're also on Facebook. Check them out there. Uh, we're very happy to work with them this upcoming split. Now, week one matchups. Our friends on Gale Force, they, they've, they've decided that this is, this is their time to prep. They're, they're letting the uh, storm build up so we can really get some Gale Force action going. They are going to be on by. For our first match of the week, we do have Team Phoenix versus Option 12. Uh, I'm going to call out some... We, we do write this stuff down ahead of time, folks. We, we, we might look unprepared, but, but trust me, we're on our A game when it comes to bringing you content. Uh, Soda, what, what's happening here? What, what, did you, what do you think is going to happen here? Uh, I think that option 12 is going to be able to take the series 2-0, or the matchup 2-0. Um, I just feel like it's going to be a really tough matchup for both teams, and I feel like that's probably going to be the highlight matchup of the week. Uh, but I feel like when it comes to the team play stages, option 12 just has that slight edge. Uh, both teams have a lot of history playing with some of their other members, so there's some laid in synergy for both teams but i just feel like option 12 historically has a has had a little bit better control over uh their objective work as a team despite being knocked out of playoffs by team phoenix last split i can agree with a lot of those points uh uh prowler thoughts um i had this marked down the opposite way of uh arcane um i had it 2 -0 in favor of Phoenix. Um, again, I think option 12 starts off the split with some of the least amount of talent relative to the other teams, and it is going to come down to that team play to overcome it. 
Um, week one, I don't, I don't see them pulling it out. Whereas Team Phoenix is so talented, they showed it off last split, and they have a few returning members. Uh, I see them kind of rolling over option twelve week one. I think it's it's really a balance uh, a a battle of what would be um, hard number talent. Where if we just look at the stats, uh, Team Phoenix definitely probably weighs a little bit more there. But in, in the games I've played against Option Twelve, uh, I can tell you that these guys have a late game presence. Uh, it's just like a light switch flips, and you, you can just feel the game leaving your control and going right into their hands. And I think a lot of that has to do with the incredible communication. Uh, I've, I've, I've played with, I know I've uh, played with Prowler and Ace. We've played some games together, and you just, just constant. It's like they know exactly what's going to happen. So I, I'm going to say 1-1, one, one, but that's just because I, I, I have commitment issues. That's probably the greatest reason. Uh, but we are bringing a new feature to you folks today, probably one of my favorites. Uh, Prowler, tell me about it. Um, so this split, uh, as joining along with our uh, our predictions, uh, we have a coin flip to see if uh, the members here of the podcast are any better than a simple 50-50 chance coin. Uh, in this case, the coin did agree with you, Sig. Um, we have all three options available, a 2-0 for Phoenix, a 2-0 for option 12, and uh, the 1-1 one, one split. Uh, the coin went 1-1 one, one, um, in favoring a tie between option 12 and Team Phoenix. I, I think that's prophetic there, folks. It agreed with me. I'm never wrong. So we know this is gospel. Uh, and I've got a feeling I'm only going to be uh, going to strengthen my feelings on it. Now... That game, highly contentious, very, very fun to watch. I hope you'll join us, please. Uh, it's going to be great, 6.30 Sunday. Uh, but set two, White Wolf Gaming and Non-Lives Gaming. Prowler, tell me, what, what are your thoughts? What What's going to happen here? The wolf's fighting the cat. What are we going to do? Uh, I listed this one as a 1-1 tie, and I think the game is going to be centered around the bot lane. Uh, White Wolf has the most experienced bot, or bot lane in the entire league. Whereas Nine Lives, I believe, has the most talented one. I think you're going to see the difference of synergy, you know, having Arcane Soda and Amaya Chan having played together for so long, um, versus the talent that uh, Brandana and Gregosaurus Rex are bringing. Um, I'd see the first game going White Wolf's play, and then the second one, Nine Lives, as they kind of, you know, start to gel together. I can get behind that. Now, Soda, what's really to happen? Well... You know, wolves are, like, stronger than cats, so I think we can take out all nine of their lives. Um, I had predicted that White Wolf Gaming would win the series 2-0 because I know that it's going to be a rough matchup for us in the bot lane, but I feel like we can kind of endure that long enough that uh, the rest of the team can kind of either help out or take the game into their hands. Uh, one of the key things I think about this matchup is going to be the jungle matchup in Nebulon versus Spicy Hot Meme, seeing those are two of the highest uh, talent jungles we have, and they were definitely uh, battling for that title in the last split of King of the Jungle. Um, so I feel like a lot of the game's going to come down to influence from them. Okay, okay. Uh, I rode the fence again. Uh, I, I White Wolf again. I've always been a perennial fan of them. Non Lives, oh, just just a very well put together team, and probably my favorite logo. Uh, shout out to uh, our graphics team for knocking that out of the park. Great job. Uh, so, what what the coin tell us? The coin once again was impartial and decided it would be a 1-1 split i'm seeing i'm seeing a uh, trend here uh we'll have to keep our eyes on that uh prowler you you lead this conversation i'm incredibly partial to this uh next matchup uh you you, you go ahead so uh the third and final matchup of week one is between northern storm and team blitzkrieg uh, again, I think these are two of the most talented teams going in, and I think no two teams have more potential than these two. For me, um, 
the lanes to focus on are the top and mid lanes. Top lane is uh, Northern Storm and is fielding. You have to pardon me while I look this. Up. It's a uh, shaken, not stirred, and then uh, Blitzkrieg is fielding a washed-up top laner, and that might be the best matchup of talent that we have available in the LCUS. It's really great that we get to see it showcased early on. Um, I see it going one-one, and I see it centered hugely around the solo lanes and who's able to get a lead. I'll be really, really interested to watch a matchup between two players I've struggled against personally: uh, washed-up top laner and shaken, not stirred. Thank you, thank you, Prowler. Thoughts. I think I did a pretty good job, but uh, maybe we can hear from Arcane Soda. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe I want some more thoughts. I don't know. Soda, <laughs> please, my apologies. Oh, come on. My <laughs> thoughts aren't that impressive. He's much get, better at this. Um, give me gospel. Give me gospel here. <laughs> going back to kind of what he said, top and mid is going to be really important for this matchup. And the most crucial part about it is going to be how can at least I feel, is how can J-Dog impact those solo lanes. Because that top lane is going to be a really tough battle for both players, and if you get a little bit of jungle support on either side, that matchup can go one way or the other. Uh, meanwhile, in the mid lane, Exia is a phenomenal laner, and if J-Dog can help get the snowball rolling there, I believe they can get a lot of uh, pressure and maybe win through that. Uh, I predicted that this matchup would be a 1-1 split because I feel like Blitzkrieg, despite the community thinking that they're going to be last place, uh, can definitely take on Northern Storm, um, even if it is just for one of the two matchups. I feel like Northern Storm is going to be able to uh, kind of adapt to Blitzkrieg's pressure and take game two. Okay, okay. So, where'd the coin set with this? Uh, the coin, once again, uh, decided to be statistically accurate in calculating probabilities and went 1-1 one, one again. This is going to be a really fun feature, folks. I'm really excited to, to, for the indecisiveness of, of technology and data systems to uh, show us the way. Uh, I think that's going to be a real addition for us. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll give us something more exciting in the future. Just so we're clear for everyone watching here, um, after the coin went 1-1 in every roll, we did debate re-rolling it, but uh, as that wouldn't be honest, we, we kept it 1-1, and we'll hope for uh, more exciting uh, predictions in the future from the coin. We may even switch it from a coin to something else that is more uh, exciting, but that we'll have to decide at a later date. Okay. Uh, there, there was a question. Uh, Maggie Megs does ask, uh, "How is the coin? How is the coin three-sided?" Uh, if someone wants to explain that. Uh, the coin is not three-sided. It's a two-sided coin. But what we did is we flipped the coin for each game of the matchup, since it's a best of two. So, we flipped it for the first game of the first series, and so on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I know where our budget's going in the future. A three-sided coin would be much more interesting than what we have right now. So uh, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe we can get our uh, our uh, R and D team on that. I, I so, agree. We need that. It's really where our money needs to be. Uh, if uh, if you have any suggestions for this feature, please let us know. We'll make it more dramatic in the future. Uh, Prowler asked chat, "Where do you think we went wrong?" Please don't hesitate to throw it in chat. Even if you miss us and you're listening to this on YouTube, please like, subscribe, uh, share. Very important as well. Uh, let us know. Uh, comment. Uh, we want you to participate in this community. So uh, that ball's in your court uh, at this point. So uh, I'm very excited for this week's matchups, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for my first split, but uh, boy, oh boy, can I tell you, these are going to be some fun games to watch. Again, we're going to be live on Twitch, 6.30 this upcoming weekend, uh, Sunday. So let, this is this is the part of the uh, Let's Talk About the League podcast where we traditionally go into Q&A. Let's, let's break down some of these. Uh, this past week, we did see, receive some incredible questions, and we thank you for submitting those. You can check out every week on our Reddit. Please go check it out. Make sure you give us that subscription. We'd love to see you there. Uh, 
we receive some really good questions, and every week we will have this Reddit thread open for what questions are going to be asked. Uh, nothing is too personal. Ask uh, ask uh, Arcane Soda and Prowler all the intimate questions that you, I know that you guys have burning inside your brains. So let's move on to some of those. Uh, who's the team to watch going into week one? Uh, Prowler, you first. For me, it's Northern Storm. Um, so many returning players. We have Shaken Not Stirred returning to the top lane, Chaosix returning to the jungle, and then uh, Sig stepping down from his commissioner role to come play with us, you know, humble plebs. I think they have, again, they're one of the the teams that has the most potential, I'll say. I, you know, I don't know if it's most talented on paper, but by the end of the split, they're the team that I do not want to be facing. Wonderful. I agree, uh, just because I'm on it and I'm self-important. Um, Soda, thoughts? Uh, just going back to, I think I've said it enough this, uh, this episode, but I feel like Blitzkrieg is definitely the team to watch because there's a lot of unknowns about the team and I just feel like they have a lot of potential. So week one's going to be really important to see how that team uh, can function, if they can fun function dynamically, or if they're just kind of a one track thing. Uh, but it's definitely going to be a very important week for Blitzkrieg to kind of prove themselves. I can get behind that, most definitely. Uh, I do want to personally in issue a correction, or not a correction, a, a being more concise. At 6.30 Eastern, folks, I'm in the superior side of the country. For those that are outside of the superior part of the country, that is 5.30 p.m. for our central friends, uh, 4.30 p.m. for uh, Mountain Time, and nobody really cares about California. Uh, but isn't Lake Superior in the central standard time zone? Uh, and I'm sure you make a very valid point. Uh, you're wrong. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm excited for you to come to emotional grips with that. And we got a whole split of podcasts for you to do that. Oh, Nova USA. No, it's Eastern Standard Time. Get your stuff together before you come at me again. Thank you. Uh, who's going to have the biggest impact for our teams, uh, for each team, or maybe just call out one player, well, whatever y'all feel comfortable doing. Prowler, you first. Biggest impact. Um, to start off with, I have J Dog, um, the jungler for I believe it's Blitzkrieg. I'm having trouble remembering all Correct. the teams. Yes, for yes. it's for Blitzkrieg. Yes, so um, Blitzkrieg again, returning top laner, washed up top laner, and Exius swapping over into his mid lane role. I think he's got two of the best solo laners to work around, and I think that that team will go as far as J Dog can take him. Um, I've you know we're we're pretty in touch with the community here. I've been playing a number of games with J Dog. And uh, his enthusiasm is just delightful to play with, honestly. Um, I'll be looking for him to do really good things uh, throughout the split. Could not agree more. Soda, thoughts? Uh, I feel like Brandana is going to be the most uh, crucial part for his team. Uh, it's not necessarily um, all your eggs in one basket sort of deal. It's just he's got so many tools to work with that uh he has every chance for success so i fully expect him to be able to follow up on that being paired with gregosaurus in the bot lane to follow up on that too um there's a buff to lucian coming out and if people aren't already aware um lucian is one of brandana's premier champions uh, that buff is to try to bring him into play for the professional scene, and I think it's going to make him just a, a busted champion. I'll be looking for White Wolf to ban it away from Brandana. Yeah, uh, his, his play just so, so powerful. Uh, well, folks, we're going to move a little bit into a lightning round. We're going to go a little bit faster. Uh, Prowler, what's going to be the closest game this week? Uh, oh, I don't. Ha I, I guess I didn't take that as this week. Um just for the split, I had done the uh, the White Wolf Gale Force game. I think is going to be the uh, the closest game. Um, I'm really hoping that both teams can make the playoffs so we can see a you know a best of three or a best of five between them. I I don't see two teams that are closer in talent than those two. I can get behind that. Soda. Option twelve versus Phoenix is going to be a very uh, I covered it before in the matchup rundown, but it's going to be a very interesting match just because both teams have a lot of synergy on their teams and they both have a lot of really good objective control and focus 
Okay, okay. I, I tend to agree with you there. Uh, but for future reference, I was actually asking for it. Uh, all right, let's talk meta versus comfort picks. Which is better? Uh, Prowler, thoughts? So, meta meta is hugely important. You need to be able to play around the meta. Um, if, if your comfort picks are not part of the meta, you can still take them into solo queue. It's not such a big deal. But if you are not playing a meta champion against the meta champion, that's a comfort for another person. If the only difference, you know, if you guys are both on comfort and the meta favors them, it's a losing lane for you. And I think it's important to, you know, recognize if your champion pool isn't in the meta, if it isn't succeeding with other players, to adjust it, to try to pick up champions who are present there so that you can succeed in solo queue and not just rely on, you know, I'm a one trick this, I'm a, you know, I'm, you know, I two trick these two champions. You need to be able to expand it some. And I think the LCS has been really good for that for a lot of different people. Uh, the counterpoint to that is there's also been a lot of success for some of those uh, more obscure niche uh, one trick sort of picks like the uh, Aatrox into Northern Storm uh, that was split two. Uh, it had some great success and Aatrox was not in the meta at the time. Uh, uh, according to that logic, every team should heavily consider Taric jungle. Um, but yeah, uh, there's definitely a lot of potential, especially since this isn't like one of like the highest level leagues. Uh, you can meta is meta just has a slight advantage just because there's a reason why there is a meta. It's because the t the picks work so well together and they're just stronger right now. Uh, but one player on a really good comfort pick can make all the difference. I I agree wholeheartedly. I would take comfort comfort picks over meta every time, just because if you're constantly chas chasing the meta, meta changes when champions change. So like this, uh, Fizz is a very good example. He's either very low tier in terms of assassins or he's at the very top 100% pick ban rate so if you're if, if he's not managed uh, you really don't get uh, if, if his kit is what changes most of the time that allows him to be viable so you, you can't really adapt to that you can't really say uh, it's going to be meta every time uh, you just have to comfort every time my opinion uh, next one uh uh, we'll, we'll, we'll save... Uh, there's only one more question, folks, and it's a subject we want to broach with you. Uh, why is the LCUS a sellout? Uh, this, this isn't... This, this, this question really wasn't posed, but it's something that we just want to put out there. We really value you guys as a community. Uh, we, we really aren't that big of any kind of channel. We, we don't have uh, all the subs as some of the bigger names that this community as a total league community might have. Uh, but we really value guys, and we take great, great pride in the product that we present to you. And for us to make a better product and for us to, as a community, to really thrive off that, stuff costs money. Uh, this uh, past, uh, during the break, after Split uh, 3, we were able to launch our championship posters uh, where Northern Storm, our first champions for the LCUS and Option 12, were able to get these beautifully, professionally done posters. Uh, uh, which, please, check us out on Facebook and look at those. They're beautiful renditions of player-chosen champions uh, put in the theme of the teams. Uh, that costs money, but it gives us a whole new dynamic of, pro of product and quality to provide you guys. And we just want to continue to do stuff like that. Uh, so please uh, like us. Uh, like us on all of our social medias. Like us on the platforms that we participate in. Subscribe. Those subscriptions are what keep the channel going, allow us to grow, allow us to have better content, better icons. We've, we've been able to reach out to some uh, uh, independent contractors with uh, our our graphic designs to give you a better product uh to, to a better experience because we want everybody to feel like that professional feel sometimes and we don't just sell our ads to anybody with the three sponsors that we have for this split uh which we're very thankful for uh we had a, a big screening process where we were figuring out who do we want to sell to are they real is this a product that meshes well with us as a community uh is this is this something that's healthy for all of us? 
and we feel confident in the choices that we make. So, uh, folks, I, I want to thank again uh, Prowler. Incredible work. Way to stay low. I'm excited to see you play this upcoming week. Uh, Arcane Soda, thank you for providing a refreshing drink uh, of knowledge every time you're questioned. Do you guys have any closing thoughts? Prowler, let's start with you. Uh, I guess the closing thought is uh, I don't think the LCUS has had as balanced of teams as they do this split. Um, there was so much effort put into, you know, where the teams were going to be. It took, you know, again, the pretty much the entire six weeks off was spent, you know, I'm sorry, not the entire, but a large portion of it was spent on making these teams and, you know, trying to figure out ways where they can gel the best while also, you know, spreading ELO around enough that, that these are balanced teams. And I'm really looking forward to seeing a split where the teams are so equally spread out where you know we're anticipating teamwork as being able to overcome some of the differences and i think this could be the best split that the lcus has had i uh definitely agree with all of those points there was a lot of good done good work done it, uh by the balance team just getting all these teams situated at a nice level where i feel like it's going to be very competitive, and like I had mentioned before when we were going over the power rankings, I feel like it was very difficult to kind of put teams above others because it just felt like all the teams were almost on the same level. I could not agree more. Uh, things are, I'm hype. I'm pumped. Ray, let's do this. Folks, again, thank you so much. I hope you have a pleasant week. Tune in to a Sunday. We look forward to see you here in another week where we're going to talk about the league. Thank you and have a great day.